session. Tonight we're going to be talking about street artists in San Francisco, and more specifically, whether or not there should in fact be city artists licensed on the streets of our city. There is at this moment a, a drive to get an ordinance passed which would allow the street artists who uh, have had some problems to be licensed and to operate on the streets of San Francisco. And tonight we'll take a look at both sides of this issue. We have uh, Robert Davis, Manager of Governmental Affairs here, please for the Greater San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. And Bob, we've done a program before. It's nice to have you with us again. Good to be back. Hal Daniels, who is a San Francisco businessman and owns the Euphoria of San Francisco Incorporated. And Daniels, Toby Daniels, right? Right. Nice to have you. And Matt and Bill Clark, two street artists and members of the San Francisco Street Artists Guild and also concerned San Franciscans for street artists. They're now seeking the signatures to put the initiative on the November 6th ballot concerning the licensing of street artists. And uh, let's see, Bill, you're, you're making sculpture and... Uh, and uh, jewelry, and I also paint. And Pat, you're making a uh, pewter puppeteer, right? Is that yes, I'm a puppeteer, right. And an old doll maker. Well, not an old doll maker, but a I former, used to make a former doll maker. A former doll maker. Well, it's nice to have you all with us. First of all, I think, uh, Bill, what you should do is uh, tell us a little bit about the initiative drive and how, how the whole thing came about. Okay. Well, basically, the whole thing has come about as a result of um, the denial of the, po the police department to deny uh, licenses uh, to artists and craftsmen uh, in the city. Uh, we've been working for about three years now on this, trying to come to some agreement with the merchants and the associations. And I have to point out that uh, the initiative is not the first proposal that the street artists have made. Uh, that since 1971, we've made eight proposals prior to this one, all of which have been rejected by the merchants and the merchant associations. And so what we've done is uh, we sort of done, ran the gambit and decided that uh, we feel that uh, it's up to the people of San Francisco to decide whether or not artists and craftsmen should be licensed. And it's not up to a few individuals who have their personal interests at heart or for whatever their personal reasons are to object to it, uh, but rather up to the people of San Francisco. And so uh, what we've done is composed an ordinance which more or less, if passed, uh, would require the police department to begin issuing the licenses and regulating the, all the ordinances that exist right now for the regulation of peddlers. Have you not been able to get any kinds of uh, peddler licenses? No, there has not been a peddler license issued to any artist and craftsman in San Francisco for about um, over three years now. There have been a few peddler licenses issued in the city. Um, one or two of them have been restricted um, to, uh, I think, a few individual artists. One was issued out in Hunter's Point, and one was issued to a woman, um, but her restriction was that she couldn't sell anywhere in the downtown areas of the Fisherman's Wharf area. And we, th we think that it's unfair that uh, artists should be more or less restricted out of the shopping areas of the city. Well, let's hear a little bit from the uh, other side. Bob, uh, Manager of Governmental Affairs for the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. Uh, are you all opposed to the street artists? Uh, in, the, in a way in which, uh, first of all, before I answer your question, Richard, I'd, I'd like to um, respond to several points that, um, that Bill made. First of all, he indicated there were eight proposals that they had made that were not acceptable to the merchant associations. I think that is a completely and totally erroneous statement. The Chamber has constantly and continually proposed a free market approach to the street art situation. We have indicated in conjunction with the Convention Visitors Bureau that if such a free market approach were utilized, then we would do all in our power to advertise and bring about complete public knowledge and recognition of the chosen site for the street artists. They indicated that uh, they were more concerned about uh, controlling or having control of the streets able to sell at locations of their choice. I would like to point out there is an extremely successful free market approach to street artists now being used by uh, several artists down Union Street, I believe the 1800 block of Union Street. He also indicated that the police department was reticent to issue permits. I would like to add that um, what he didn't say was there is a very serious question of illegality, uh, whether or not the city and county would be in fact liable if an individual were to uh, incur some type of, of personal damage, of, say, stumbling over a, a site that was on a public uh, sidewalk. The question of legality is one that has to be determined, 
And that is one primary reason why the police department has been reticent to issue licenses. So I think that's very important. You're saying that if they decide, if they agree to go to, to a flea market type of setup, the city would issue them licenses? I'm sure they would. I believe there would be difficulty there at all. And but that would be restricted licenses, wouldn't it? Licenses for what? Why? To do business on private property. We can get a license for that already. We can get a, a, a state board of equalization license anytime we want to go down and put the deposit on it. But that doesn't entitle us to sell and peddle our wares or, or our puppet show or whatever on the streets and in, in, in areas that we feel that uh, we'd like to show. Very good point. Very good point. And I think in, in that one sentence is the, is the germ of all the controversy. Does that entitle you to compete with businesses who sell similar merchandise in similar areas. That is, if Hal Daniels is selling jewelry in one of his stores, does that entitle you, Bill Clark, to sell directly in front of his store and actively and openly compete with him when he has to pay the various local business taxes, rent, overhead, I would uh, contend that that's false. Hal, you might want to uh, comment I'd, on that. I'd like to respond to that. But Hal, I, just to get his two cents in here, what was your response to that? Well, exactly that. Uh, it, it's very difficult. We call it unfair competition, which it, it really is. Right. It's impossible to compete simply with a business that has no overhead. And uh, that's been one of the major problems. But uh, in, in our particular area, Fisherman's Wharf, the main one is legality and congestion and possible damage. Uh, to life and limb, the congestion that's added. What uh, what is it about the street artists that you object to? I mean, what do you mean life and limb? What what kind of problems can there be? All right, if if an artist has his goods displayed on a public street, and I'm walking down the street, and I'm I'm thinking about something else or looking at something else, and I happen to trip and fall over that artist display. The question is one of liability. Naturally, uh, if I were seriously injured and there were grounds for a civil suit, I would seek out those individuals who were responsible for having the artists there in the first place. Uh, the city could be liable, and again, this is the question of legality, which I earlier mentioned, in that they have licensed, by giving the individual a, a peddler's license, what has become a public nuisance. As with the individual in front of whose store that individual artist had operated, and the artist himself naturally would be liable for blocking a public sidewalk. So all these things have yet to be settled, and I, I would uh, defer that question to the courts, not to the electorate. Bill, you wanted to talk? Yeah, yeah I'd like to settle all this because uh, this is, you know, one of the things that I understand is, is an objection, and that's why what we're proposing in, in the initiative, we feel, you know, covers all these things. Now, um, you know, like the talk first comes up about competition and everything like that, and I can uh, agree with any merchant that it would be unfair for somebody who has a pipe store or something like that to um, have, all of a sudden have a guy who makes pipes step in front of his store and sell and stuff. But uh, I just want to remind uh, Mr. Davis that in the last proposal that we put before the supervisors, there was an arrangement there that no artist would sell within 100 feet of any merchant or business who was selling similar merchandise, but yet they, you know, they still oppose that. Uh, the thing about competition that I want to bring up is, again, like, let's get to, the, to what we're talking about. We're talking about the peddler's license, and uh, if competition is involved in that, it brings up one question to me, and that is, is competition, you know, is it the duty of the police department to regulate competition? And I also agree that I think that there's a little bit of unfair competition involved in here some way, but I think it's reversed. I think it's unfair when an artist who is making his own designs, creating it, and then going out on the street and selling it, has to compete with a, a major import house who, who takes its designs and so, sends it over to Taiwan, has it mass produced by people for cheap wages, ships it back over here, puts it in its stores, has millions of dollars to advertise it, and then has a large business, and all we have is a two-by-three square foot of concrete on the street, and we have to compete with that machine. I think it's, you know, like it's unfair in, in the reverse direction. Now, as far as... Um, as far as blocking the sidewalk goes and everything like this, I've done some uh, research into the, to the existing ordinances, and in, d in doing so, I found out that um, you know that there are already ex laws that exist that regulate the use of the sidewalks. Like for instance, um, um, 
section 20 of the police code states that no person shall willfully sit, lie, or sleep in, in or on any street, sidewalk, or any public place in such a manner as to obstruct the free passage or use in the customary manner of such street, sidewalk, or other public place. So what I'm saying basically is that to deny a person a license on the basis that he might violate a law or a code that is already that is already regulated in the books is unfair. Like we don't deny people driver's licenses on the basis that you know they may go out and drive without a drive without their driver's license, or somebody else may go around and drive without a driver's license. You know, if we use this type of logic, nobody in this in in this country would be issued a driver's license. And so what we're saying is, don't deny these licenses. The ordinances already exist to regulate hawking. If there's a law that prohibits hawking, if a person violates any of these codes, they're subject to arrest, they're subject to imprisonment, they're subject to fines, and they're subject to the loss of their license. Bill, you indicated a number of things I'd like to respond to. Uh, one, you indicated there are applicable sections in the police code that currently exist. Granted, there are. The point is, again, I get back to the question of liability. The city and county of San Francisco was recently given a AAA credit rating. And the importance of this thing is that if the city is sued, the city is responsible. We're, not, we're now facing some $650 million budget situation without even counting the Unified School District. We have over $14 million in suits now pending from accidents directly related to cable cars. The question of liability is one that CRs have completely and totally disregarded. That's not true, Bob. You know that we have had an insurance policy for two years. Though. For two years, we never had any claim on that insurance policy. You know, and both Hal, and Hal Daniels knows too, that we went to the Parks and Rec Department and got a permit for Victoria Park. And the basis that we got that was because we did have the insurance policy. So we cover all our own members. All right. So the city's covered. The city is covered. I want to indicate to you Bill, that you will very, very infrequently find a civil suit in which personal damages have been incurred that is $250,000 in nature. I would point out to you that the majority of those suits are in excess of a million dollars. And my only point is that... You know, can I say something? Else? My only point is that this is something that has been completely disregarded. $250,000 in insurance for uh, creation of uh, what could be a, quote, public nuisance, unquote, I'm saying that in quotes because it yet has to be determined legally, I don't think is a, uh, a favorable figure. And you, you, you said a number of things I'd like to respond to, and I'm probably preempting how, but one thing you did indicate was the fact of unfair competition, how a merchant who has a, quote, million-dollar advertising budget can send something to Taiwan, have it created for cheap labor, then have it sent back and then displayed it, merchandised and sold. Now, you're saying that because you don't have this massive budget and this massive capital to do so, then you should be allowed to sell in the area in which you want to sell it, regardless of where you want to sell That's what you said. That's, that's not what I said. What I'm saying is if you're going to bring up competition as an argument and unfair competition as a reason to deny people th this license, then, you know, like unfair <coughs> competition inv involves, you know, both sides. And I just wanted to point out, you know, what some of the feelings that some artists and craftsmen have as far as, you know, the, the competition issue, because I don't feel that it's a legitimate issue. It has been, though, for from the beginning because we've had people selling directly to the people on the street at wholesale prices and then they're the people that were selling to us in our stores and Wait, expecting us to. You've had people sell to directly to the people on the street. Yes, in the very beginning price. when we raised it as an issue, we had can, candle manufacturers, mm -hmm. for instance, they'd sell to us at wholesale and then go on the street and sell at wholesale prices also. If but then it's up to you mm -hmm. then not to buy from them anymore, right? Well, we, d we did that. However, in your particular case, there, there must be three or four hundred uh, jewelry manufacturers that make similar jewelry to yours, which we buy. We handle your type you of jewelry. You refuse to buy my jewelry. <clears throat> Well, do you see why? That's the important thing. And as far as the no. ordinance... No, why did you buy his jewelry? Well, I didn't in the first place. I'm, I'm, well, somebody in your business did it. Well, they screen all the time. They they look at it, but it's still the silver wire. It's, it's very similar. 
Uh, we carry the, both both of our locations. We carry the handmade jewelry, whether it's yours or the next craftsman. It's not significant, really, whether he got there before well, you did. It is significant. You know, I mean, it's significant to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I realize but, your point. Yeah, okay, go ahead. But back to the ordinance, which is the, the major issue. Up until this point, uh, any rules or regulations that have been set up for the street peddlers have, 99% of them have been ignored. Uh, you, even, uh, I believe... But how can you rule, you know, like you, you, you've created a, a, a situation where people are running on the street selling uncontrolled, unlicensed. Now, it's your, you people are responsible for that because you've influenced the police department not to issue those licenses. But there are existing laws even now. How and there's you, been no respect for them. In fact, that can't control people when they're not licensed. Let uh, him finish, okay. brother. And that was the major complaint at one meeting with the Board of Supervisors that uh, I believe uh, Diane Feinstein had said, uh, we asked you to do this, and they gave a trial period of mm -hmm. so many weeks or so many months. None of the rules were followed. She well, said, well, what were the rules? Well, the locations. We've always had a problem with locations. They gave the, uh, at that particular time, they had the uh, square in front of the city hall and down the Embarcadero. Two or three locations. By the library. Two or three locations? No, there were two locations. Right. There was an original list of some 20 locations or right. more that was originally introduced by your attorneys, Nolan Brown from Oakland. Uh, they realized that in order to obtain final approval for the Embarcadero and Civic Center Plaza, they had to obtain approval of the Rec Park Commission. They didn't do so during the trial period, Bill. You know that. That was the controversy involved before the Board of Supervisors Fire Safety and Police Committee. And this is the kind of thing that shows the artist's complete and total disrespect for the existing ordinance. Uh, are you currently selling? Yes. In the locations as authorized no, by the ordinance? I can't afford the $20. I think that I, I never made more than twenty dollars in the location that was that that when I was certified to sell in there, and you know I was on the certification board. Matter of fact, I'm one of the people who created the certification program in my mind, and you know, like I've got the letters to prove that the only reason why the street artists are in those locations are because that's where you want us, not because the street that's not because that's the proper place for street artists, but that's because that's the only place where you'll agree to allow artists and craftsmen to sell. We have got to. Uh, I want to get to the ordinance uh, specifically, but I, what I'd like, what I'd like to ask you, Bob, is uh, you mentioned things like accidents and liabilities and, and uh, other points. But it, wouldn't you say that the the, com the competitive aspect would be the, the single most significant reason why businesses are opposed to street artists? I don't think there's any question about it. I would very much like to help the street artists set up a free market kind of atmosphere, much like the Renaissance Fair type of atmosphere wherein a group of artists and merchants sell their handcrafted goods. I would point out that there has been a controversy uh, recently settled, I think, in Berkeley, wherein you have row after row and street after street of, of peddlers on Telegraph Avenue and talking about the quality of merchandise, I would guess probably only 5 to 10 percent actually handcraft their goods. The rest are either... Well, I mean, it's ridiculous to even bring these things up. No, it isn't, Bill, because the point is, the point is that... Uh, the point is, is that they issue permits to anybody that wants to sell anything on the street. And that's, again, the question. I don't. That's, Berkeley, that's not what we're system. talking about. You're talking about a peddler's permit. We're talking about issuing peddler's licenses <laughs> to artists and craftsmen. You're talking about a peddler's permit, purely and simply. The quality and nature of the goods is not determined. The chief of police can't determine about uh, whether or not your goods are, in fact, handcrafted. Well, Mr. Davis, have you read what we're proposing? What are you proposing? We're proposing that any street artist residing street artist. residing in the city of San Francisco who peddles on the public sidewalks, those articles or things which he creates himself, shall be issued a police peddler permit by the police department and a general, general peddler license by the tax collector upon payment of a $20 annual fee to the tax collector, providing that he first files with the tax collector an affidavit setting forth his name, address, and what he makes, and the fact that he makes it himself. Now, the, there's a way in San Francisco that a person is defined as a street artist, and that is that he has been certified, certified by, by the, the Art guild. Commission. Yes. No, not by the guild, by the by Art, art commission. commission. And there are no guild members on the certification board in the Art Commission. Then 
Bill, uh, Bill, you, Bill resigned, as I recall. Right, I resigned from yes, Bill and Warren. Right. From it. And so this, this proposal, ordinance, would just specifically, would specifically for just street artists. It wouldn't be for any peddler. You would have to be certified by the Art Commission before you would be able to file for the license. Again, I, I, I don't really know if I can, I can reiterate this more and more and more. The question is one, I guess, of basic economics. Bill doesn't seem to understand that for an individual to become a businessman or to become an, a, a, uh, an individual like Hal who has a store, he doesn't start off bam like that with a complete clientele. It's tough for him initially to start out too. And you're saying looking at the end result of work. And you're indicating that you don't feel it's fair to compete with that. Now, do you feel that the competition from the street artists is unfair to you? Oh, very much so, yes. Uh, on the ordinance thing, however, as I stated earlier, the major issue has been abiding by the existing law. And I don't, it appears to me that regardless of any new ordinance that we draft or whatever, uh, if it doesn't coincide with exactly what the street peddler, street artist feel, they won't abide by that either. Well, what what do you problem. think that we feel? You know, what, what he is saying is that uh, no matter what's in the law, that the street artists will, will go ahead and do whatever they want to do anyway. Right, that's what yeah, Supervisor I mean, Feinstein said. said. Well, well, two, uh, at the, at, at the two mean, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. You know, like, you presume that we're going to break the law based on our past experience. And what I'm saying is, I'm saying if you issue an individual license, you charge him money for it, he, he works hard all day, he's going to respect that. He's going to respect it by not violating the codes and the ordinances that might... might have that license removed. But five minutes ago, you said uh, the reason I didn't so and do so and so or conform to the rule, whatever it was, I didn't have the twenty dollars. What you're talking about, Bill, is selective obeyance of laws with which you might particularly agree, and I cannot abide by that. I don't think you can either. You're saying yeah, if I agree with the existing ordinance, then I will abide by it. If I have respect in it, then I will abide no, by I'm it. No, I'm saying if I'm issued a business license to do business, that I will abide by all the ordinances and codes that regulate the activities of people on the streets. I, I very much disagree with your interpretation. I think the fact that you're now disobeying the existing ordinances is clear proof of the fact that you have no respect for the existing ordinance. Well, Bill's not on trial <laughs> right now, so uh, what I'd like to know is uh, a little more about the the initiative campaign. Mm -hmm. What What is it specifically uh, you're trying to do with this? What, what does the ordinance say, and how many signatures do you have? How many do you need? Okay. Well, spe specifically, like Pat was trying to bring out, is what we're trying to do is set up a, a permit procedure that regulates and that we would issue licenses to artists and craftsmen in the city particularly, not general peddlers. And it would set up a, a fee which we feel would be more or less reasonable. It's a $20 fee, a, a year fee, which is, is we feel is reasonable and that can be met, plus uh, the original certification program, which, like we said, it, it says any street artist, meaning that an individual who would qualify this would have to be certified through the Art Commission to show that he is making and selling his own artwork, that he's not a manufacturer or anything. So, you know, that's basically what it is. We want to get these people out on the street. We want a system whereby uh, their activity on the street can be controlled and regulated, whereby if they do violate any ordinance uh, that their license can be revoked. And going for the police permit, like it says here that the police that, that we we want the police department to issue the permit. Now, if you look on the back page of that, there's what's required by the police department is that any individual who tries to get a permit he has to list their locations, the time he's going to be there, so that the police department can regulate the activity. And that's what we're trying to do is to to get the police department to regulate the activity, know who's where, who's where, what time they're going to be there, so that they can keep an eye on the situation. Because as long as it's unlicensed uncontrolled, you know, nobody stands to benefit from it. Now, assuming that the ordinance were passed and the street artists uh, were more or less uh, saying they were going to abide by the law or they were going to be, you know, arrested and uh, have their licenses taken away, and if they stayed 100 feet away from, from competition, would you still be opposed? In other words, are you opposed to the, to the ordinance if the laws were obeyed? If the laws were obeyed, if the laws were obeyed, I, I really can't answer that question. I, 
have yet to see the artists obey any ordinance. And I, at this point, if they're in competition with the existing businesses, would naturally go on record as being affirmably opposed to this legislation. Yeah, and I too, primarily because for, uh, the basic issue is should we use the sidewalks as business locations? And they're not designed for that. And in our case, that's not true. <coughs> What's well, not true? That they're not designed for that? For that. Well, go on. Well, the sidewalks are not designed for retail businesses. They really are not. The park, Victoria Park down by Fisherman's Wharf, it's a very small park. At one time, it was completely covered, every bench, every everything, with, with street artists. It's not designed for that purpose. It's designed for the people, not for retail businesses. And that's the basic issue. Can we design an ordinance that would legalize making every street or the street of, the, of their choice, which in this case happens to be the busiest areas? They're very selective. The most expensive and uh, higher traffic, uh, high, higher trafficked areas are always the best, and those are the ones they've chosen. Uh, we already have enough congestion both downtown. All you need to do is go to Montgomery Street or, or the busier areas downtown or Fisherman's Wharf, and you'll see that the congestion is unbelievable. They're struggling to do more parking and trying to improve the, the congestion that we have, but this is just an additional thing to it, and that's the basic issue. Sidewalks are not for retail businesses. It really improved the wharf area if they allowed no traffic in there, set it all off in mall areas, and improved the whole thing, you know, like that. You, you know, I don't, I don't understand. You don't like the fact of us being able to sell it in Victoria Park. But then, you know, starting July 4th, because a promoter is going to do it, that's fine, you know, the down in Hyde Street Pier, you know, there can be an art show. But the San Francisco's own artists can't do it, you know, and it really gripes me that, you know, the, the merchants associations can uh, uh, back their own, you know, promotion of artists and, and rip them off, you know, for promotion fees and for percentages and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But when the artist wants to uh, benefit themselves by being legal and be able to feed their family, you know, like, well, that's wrong. Do you have a final comment? We only have about a minute. Yeah, I'd just like to say, uh, just in response to what um, Hal said, I think that, uh, you know, that's not necessarily true. I think he's, you know, getting a little bit too emotional that uh, the streets are primarily for the use of traffic and the presence of vendors thereupon is as lawful as is the presence of any other person as long as they observe the provisions of ordinance number 649 approved January 15th, 1909. All right, I'd like to point out the, the opinion that uh, Mr. Clark just read was one dated 1910, and I would indicate that there has been an appreciable pickup in sidewalk traffic and uh, probably pedestrian traffic since that time. Could I make one final comment? It's got to be fast. Okay, the, this, this, this just shows that, you know, this is from the Telegraph Hill Neighborhood Association, and they charge artists $20 a day to sell in Fisherman's Wharf, and that's what I contend they want to do, to make money off of the artists. What's the deadline for your initiative? Uh, uh, the deadline drive. is approximately August 31st, and we have a table on Market Street between uh, 830 Market Street for anybody who'd like to sign the petition. Thanks to uh, Bob Davis and Al Daniel for taking the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce point of view and uh, Pat and Bill Clark, two artists, uh, who have joined us. And I think it was a, an interesting exchange of ideas. Uh, pro, or, pro and con for the proposed ordinance to license street artists in San Francisco. This is Richard Scheer, KNBR News. Thank you for joining us on Rap Session. We'll see you again next Sunday at 7.30. The opinions on the preceding program were not necessarily those of KNBR.